Hi. Hello. How are you? Hello once, once again. Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Nice to be connected. Good. Nice to be live. Nice, nice to be live. Did you do any lives before? Actually, no. And I no. was um, laughing with my colleague, Miriam, who is our mastermind behind all digital in El Cercar. Because she sent me a link last night, how to do IGTV live. And I felt like I was 65 years old. I was telling her that. I was like, I think I should be okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, um, um, I still believe it won't, uh, it won't be a proper replacement of uh, uh, communication between people. But in the situation we are all uh, now, it's a great uh, opportunity to stay connected, you know. Uh, I agree. Yeah. So I can I think see all this people. Will... Yeah. Ah, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I can see people are joining. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I would love to chat and chat with you, but uh, I hope I'll see you in El Circal one day uh, soon. Uh, and then we can like... Uh, uh, talk, uh, but uh, now I don't want to take lots of time from our audience because uh, nowadays the virtual zone is uh, so much uh, uh, flooded. Let's say you know with the amount of workshops, online sure. uh, talks, and uh, so uh, I'm very very uh, proud to um, uh, host uh, today Vilma Yukata, uh, who is the director of Alcercal Avenue. Vilma, thank you so much. Uh, for supporting uh, my initiative and um, accepting the invitation to participate in this interview and to answer some questions. Uh, I'm really, really grateful, actually. It's, You're it's too kind. A... <laughs> it's the way around. I admire everything that you've done uh, with art experts, um, how you've you so engaged much. our audiences and, and helped us really spread the message of and the importance of the arts through your alternative programs. So um, um, it's the other way around. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm trying my best. Like I haven't been uh, very active for the last uh, year and a half. I was about to start programs again, uh, but yeah, but because of COVID, it's fine. We will, uh, it all will be fine. <laughs> we will wait for your return. Hopefully soon. <laughs> So uh, I know you've spoken a lot about um, Alcercal, its growth, its development. Uh, uh, but what's about your um, career? Uh, what's about your journey? Uh, how did you become a, a director of, um, of the leading art hub um, in the UI, in the Middle East, in the region? And uh, where did it all start for you? It's so difficult to separate the two because today I sometimes get mail in uh, in our offices that just says Vilma um, <laughs> Isarkar. I become synonymous uh, with this organization <laughs> over the past eight years, and we laugh about it with the team all the time. Um, well, my interest and my kind of pedagogy and my education. Uh, crosses and transgresses those borders between different disciplines. So um, I have a background in the arts, in uh, business, and in uh, sustainable urban development with my recent uh, master's uh, completion at Oxford. And I was always interested in connecting those disciplines uh, a little bit closer together. Um, the way my journey in Dubai began, I mean, before that, I attempted to do so in creative industries in New York, in London. Um, I finished my education in France before that. So I was always, and I'm originally from Lithuania. So all um, over the globe. So, yeah, I think that's kind of the story of so many of us who are based in Dubai, right? I mean, I think we are all these kind of global nomads um, in, in many ways and Dubai has become a home. It, it, was, it became a, a city that actually offered me uh, all of these disciplines in one position. And that's mm -hmm. really what Al Sarkal has given me. But in your question, then you say we've now evolved and, and Al Sarkal is different from what it used to be. I still sometimes yes. have a hard time believing because I remember that I would knock on doors 
and no one knew. They'd be like, who are you? What is El Sarkal? I mean, I would call my contacts from New York or London and I just moved to Dubai. And, and they were quite dismissive about Dubai's position at the time. And that was eight years ago. And now so much has uh, changed. Changed, um, yeah. yeah. Today. Like, like, extremely changed. I remember myself when I moved to Dubai like 10 years ago, I came six months later, I, I've, uh, I came to El Sarkal. Um, and um, yeah, there were a few galleries uh but i was like what's what's this place <laughs> and um and seeing now uh what it turned uh, into it's just unbelievable you know it's like uh... but i think alsterkal is a great um, reflection of what dubai is in general it's being built in front of our eyes mm -hmm. it's like kind of yeah. being developed you know and we all talking about the city all people living in dubai we all, in a way, uh, part of the growth and development of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of you witnessing the, the history. That's, uh, that's something uh, very special, as per that's, my opinion. That's amazing to hear you say that. Just you saying being developed uh, is something we talk a lot about. That as a Sarkal, we are not synonymous with a built environment that we are a process. It's this incredible uh, collection of polyphonic voices, identities, identity. uh, entrepreneurs, you know, artists, makers, thinkers that come together in this place. Um, yeah. And that's where ideas Cre are born. Creative, creative crowd. Yeah, because you're offering not only, Astrakal offers not only, um, um, not it, like, it's offering it's offering not only for the people who are directly in the art field you know so it's everyone who sure. is uh, in a way uh, connected to the creative industries and that's what your um, career is about you like you you've devoted it to developing uh, creative industries all over the globe as you yeah, as you said well, I think art is our purpose, right? I mean, anyone that's, I mean, you can be involved in different elements. Is it the business side or is it, um, um, you know, or is it for me uh, planning or placemaking? Uh, but art is really the core, the not core, only of our yeah. work. It's, it's the core of, I mean, it's part of our life. Uh, in so many ways. So I, I find it very hard to actually separate. Separate it, um, I see. Yeah, I see what you mean. And um, another interesting question. I think I think it's um, quite yeah uh, quite um, um, interesting to hear what uh, what what's your experience. Being um, uh, have you ever felt uh, during your career um, in the Middle East being a um, young European uh, woman uh, limits uh, or decreases your uh, opportunities or chances <clears throat> in terms of developing your career? Well, I think it's um, probably something you were asked before as well, um, who, who is in a very similar position. Um, I have a difficult relationship with this question just because I think we have to also deconstruct it and unpack it a little bit in ways how it says some sort of precondition for a particular stereotype then it comes to a particular region. Because what we tend to do, it's much easier to block and uh, create regions. And I, I like to shy away from that regionalism because then we assume that the entire Middle East is one and the same thing and that all nations in Europe are one and the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so with that, sometimes there are new preconditions um, that are born in terms of critique or assumptions or stereotypes. But I think what's important here is to begin seeing that very same inequality or diff in different respects, but when it comes to gender in Europe or the West altogether. I mean, if you look at the reports on 500 fortune companies, only 37 of them are women CEOs. Women, yeah. And this is the highest number we had this year. Um, so that means that there's still 463 men <laughs> who are in charge. <laughs> and yeah. the same if I look at national government makeup, you know, less than 30% of national government seats are held by women. So I think in ways you get surprised because in the UAE, 
um, 50 percent of, of uh, its cabinet are, are now you women. Know, gender equal. It's women. Yeah. Um, and you have so many incredible women in ministerial positions, including our very own uh, incredible supporter, uh, Noor Al-Kabi, who is uh, the Minister of Culture, Culture. And, and Youth and Knowledge Development. And she's been uh, instrumental, I think, in reshaping uh, our cultural geography within the UAE. So, um, I, you know, I, yeah, I think it just depends how we look at it. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree with, uh, with your vision about this. Uh, and it's a lot about stereotypes, you know, but uh, I think we need to break stereotypes. That's and that's what's happening Indeed. slowly. Yeah, that's happening slowly, slowly, eventually. But uh, yeah, it takes time, you know, it takes time. Yeah, it's, it's an incremental steps, right? Incremental changes before you can yeah, get yeah. to a bigger yeah. breakthrough. Bigger, yeah, sure. Um, and um, talking about uh, the pandemic because uh, we can't skip it you know it's like our uh, hot topic of <laughs> of this year what kind of uh, professional and uh, personal uh, challenges have you faced due to uh, to the pandemic it's hard to single them out because i think all of us felt that all patterns that were known to us um were just it, it all Fresh. just changed in a moment's notice. And it, it almost was this kind of paralysis uh, of thinking, paralysis of the entire world uh, due to COVID. But then it also produced other movements that, or events that took place afterwards, um, from Black Lives Matter to um, explosion in Beirut, and so it was this kind of new saga that, that just happened. And I think today we're all in experiencing it differently. We are in a very different present. Um, and, I, and so clearly I think, you know, managing a creative community uh, of entrepreneurs and, and, and startup businesses in some cases and um, artists collectives and, you know, a space that is so dependent on audience engagement where we, engage more than 700,000 visitors annually now uh, after being around for a decade. We, we had our challenges, but um, I, I think it's where our values and mission uh, guided us as a compass in terms of, okay, how do we respond um, and how do we overcome these challenges? So within 10 days in March, we took all our 17 exhibitions online. And oh, no. that was due to our incredible team, uh, who is like my family in Dubai, and, uh, and our community. We were all in this together. So we didn't have answers, but we said, okay, let's, let's just make attempts um, to see how we can engage our audiences and bring our program to our audiences. And that's how al uh, online was born. And, and now mm -hmm. it's, it's it's continuing to actually okay. grow. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, they're both intertwined, physical and, and per, I mean, personal and, and professional, I think, uh, in, in the sense. Um, but I call this period as a period of continuous remaking. I think we all are challenged to be planning for resilience, uh, identifying ways how we can mitigate and adapt um, for whatever scenario is yet to come. So the kind of, you know, risk analysis that we now must conduct before any kind of event uh, or program uh, that we are releasing is, is completely different from, from, what it, mm -hmm. from what we used to, um, to, do to plan, you know, what, six months ago. Go. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pushing us for the very quick thinking and uh, uh, making kind of... Uh, uh, quick, quite quick steps, because, um, and it's, yeah, it's like, um, not lots of time to analyze, because uh, mm. if you, and everything is changing so fast, you know, you can sit and think and analyze, but tomorrow it will be completely different uh, picture, you know, completely different scene. Completely. So it's in a way risking, but uh, yeah, risking is, um, is a part of the game, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's part of today's uh, environment, I think, because... Today's, yeah, today's um, presence. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of times I used to be, I, I would get asked, you know, what is your vision for the next five years or 10 years? And I was always wary of, of these long-term visions. You know, I, I was, I read a quote somewhere the other day that um, said that, you know, these big visions sometimes can hold an organization ransom uh, because today's world is demanding a different kind of statute. Um, we are we are demanded to adapt and to plan yeah. differently and and constantly respond. And I think it was easier for us because we always viewed ourselves as a process. So to recast this model of operation and to readapt quickly as a community mm-hmm. um, in ways became our 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 strength at this difficult time. So yeah, my actually next question is quite connected to what you are, what you are talking about. Um, so, what is the core uh, philosophy behind the Alcercal Avenue when it was created? What, what was the, um, the main, uh, the main <clears throat> pillars? You know, and uh, due to the, to the current situation in the world, how did you have to modify it, or if you had to modify it, maybe maybe not. Yeah, that's a very good question because I actually think if anything we learn that your mission and values becomes your core foundation. So everything else might change. How you do things, when you'll do them. But what you stand for uh, is, is, is key. It's your foundation. Yeah. And so I think for us, it was always supporting and championing uh, homegrown talent um, it, you know, I think especially um, as an institution and, and, and as, a, as a space, you know, because we serve so many different facets. We are a neighborhood, we are a community, uh, we are a content producer. Um, we always have a role to play. And I think in, in all of it, we always challenge the conventional. Uh, this was something that was always very important to us. And, and, and we constantly try to... Um, uh, challenge those paradigms or ways we do things around us. Um, but as a foundation, um, we also are quite um, uh, firm about as to how can we stand for to be that space where we produce, uh, where we support the kind of research and the kind of practices and, and the way and the kind of alternative learning uh, that leads to production of new forms of knowledge. And that then, as a result, remaps geographies of knowledge globally. Um, and so even at this very difficult time for all of us financially, uh, we still announced research grants and our support for artistic community because it's so important that um, we, we create conditions for our artists, practitioners, and thinkers uh, to sustain themselves at this uh, very challenging, uh, challenging time. And so I think this moral valuation, um, this, this kind of recalibration that we are all undergoing, if I learned anything, is that your values becomes your guiding compass. Yeah. And that's kind of all you have really to then lead you through or help you navigate crises that you might face. I remember during one of the gatherings i think in also you said this phrase challenge the conventional and i really liked it so much you know and it's something really um it's a lot behind it you know it's such a short phrase but has a has such a deep meaning oh yeah, that's great just, to hear you said it now and like i i remember um hearing it and just thinking about it you know um and of course um talking about the communities because the Alcercal Avenue is not I mean it's living its life but it's a part of the city and it's living and developing for the city for the community for the people so uh, during this stormy time times how did um, Alcercal Avenue supported the community and vice versa what did ki- what kind of support you got uh, you felt from the community because i think it's it's really like it's a it's a mutual relationship yeah it's a quite a, quite deep mutual relationships absolutely and it makes me so glad uh, to hear you say that you see al-sarkal as part of the city 
and that you see our purpose uh, living within our publics and our community because that's something that is essential part of what we do and why we do what we do. Um, I mean, when pandemic hit, um, we gathered everyone right away because I think key is communication. And because of our close relationship with all of our community members in the avenue, more than 70 founders of various concepts that in their own right challenge the conventional in different industries from uh, performing arts in terms of theater or dance or film, art, design, architecture, etc. And so I think it's this kind of um, community that, you know, when we came together, we were asking the same questions. Um, how do we respond to this? And I mean, the reality was that we knew that this is going to be a huge challenge for us collectively. And the idea was, can we share that burden? Uh, I think one thing we also agreed on was that closing our doors in times of crisis as a cultural institution was not going to suffice. Um, our communities around us were suffering. So we couldn't just sit at home and say, that's all we can do. Um, and, and that kind of collective mission is how it mutually translated through Pay It Forward initiative. Um, where we said to all our community members, and this is honestly, um, really, I'm so grateful to our founder, Abdul Manam al Sirkal and the al Sirkal family mm -hmm. that are just such incredible um, patrons uh, because they've agreed with this kind of approach. Um, and so we've given a three months leasing subsidy to all of our community members, provided you were responding to help those around us. So all we asked was, please pay this forward, give back. Yeah. And what happened after was kind of remarkable because it just created this ripple effect. You had, we witnessed our galleries and artists starting to donate sales proceeds from their artworks to then dedicate it to Inked, our um, culinary concept that used to be dedicated mostly to luxury interventions and events became a community kitchen. kitchen. And, yeah, you know, inked. their staff was there inked every day, seven days a week, uh, producing meals for um, front life uh, healthcare workers to vulnerable communities around us, um, to Venelkuz and beyond. And so I think so in the, at the end of the three months, we produced 22,000 uh, meals. meals. Um, but then we also made, uh, I think, about 6,000 masks that, were, um, that uh, were produced by our fashion concepts that also got together. Um, but I think what was even more remarkable to me was this generosity of knowledge, of expertise that I witnessed within al Sarkal because our owners actually what happened they ended up swapping their services and products in order to support each other at that difficult time which as a result produced a barter economy worth more than like almost one million dollars and so i think that kind of strength now became our strength even more so so then beirut blast uh, happened we all felt extremely affected and we were able to get together as a community the next day and plan an initiative together yeah, for Beirut yeah. within less mm -hmm. than a week. So we kind of created this new agility that now allows us to set bigger objectives and tighter deadlines and kind of be okay with that, which is, there are some positives that are coming out of, of this pandemic, I think. Yeah, no, definitely. And another thing, uh, lots of people are talking about uh, uh, the fact that due, due to pandemic, uh, we're all feeling a little bit separated. But what I can see from all over the world and like what you were just talking about, that only staying together and standing together, uh, we can just uh, over overcome it, you know, and like, um, um, yeah, kind of defeat it, you know. Um, so yeah, that's that's very very important. Communities, uh, I, yeah, I don't believe uh, in the world uh, by uh, 
like kind of functioning one by one, you know, I think only together, only together, only like uh, being, uh, being as a collective mission, being as a, like, yeah, um, being engaged all together, it can be done in a way. It Absolutely. Be yeah. I mean, you cannot do anything alone today. No, no, um, you can't. So, you know, and... Whatever, what, whatever they say, no, you can't. And like more I look around, more like I see, just yeah, uh, you, you can't. It's uh, you can try, but uh, at the end of the day, there will be a moment, you know, when uh, when you will uh, fall because you need. We all need support. We all need uh, uh, brainstorming, like uh, thinking, uh, thinking in the in the same like yeah to to do to achieve something you need to have people who uh, who inspire who support you whom you can rely on i yeah. couldn't agree more i mean i think we all have it in our personal journey there was always someone that believed in us at some point in our life and gave us a chance um but then also in our professional journeys um where it's only this kind of collectivity of ideas that produces something uh, that is history making uh, usually, and with crises like this, I mean, humanitarian crises where you have our global leaders um, confused and lost and thinking, you know, how do we tackle this? Um, you certainly feel that the only option is us, is us coming together, even if we enter some sort of period of unknown or uncertainty. And this is clearly the time where private sector, public sector, um, must come together uh, okay. to help tackle this crisis and, and work collectively because, and we've seen this, we've seen uh, enemies or key competitors in the art world and beyond become partners at this time. Uh, because, you know, we all have this common enemy, coronavirus. Yes. So yeah. we all need to tackle it's, it together. It's, it's, it's a very different position. Always easier to fight against one, <laughs> uh, one enemy. <laughs> Completely, but you're, but you're completely like uh, right about uh, the fact that everyone was lost, you know, because I think no one knew what to do, you know. Now at least more or less we're getting some understanding, and yeah, the situation still will be changing every single day. But uh, like the governments, the the businesses, uh, just the people uh, all over the globe, they more or less kind of understand what's happening. But in the beginning of all this uh, uh, crisis, yeah. It, Everyone, I think just uh, everyone was following each other, you know, trying to understand what's happening, but no one knew, no one has any, no one had any clue. Um, so, and we, uh, still, and we, we still don't. <laughs> we still well, it's, don't. It's yeah, unfolding. Still, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind preliminary. of, you know, I think it's this year training uh, very well, like uh, two feature, like two, yeah, skills, patience. I lost you. Oh. Uh, yeah, you're back. Yeah. You're back. Yeah. Good. Patience and the um, um, skill of challenging, you know, challenging yourself, challenging, yeah, uh, being challenged. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we don't we still don't have a clue, but it's at least I, I want to think so, to hope so that we getting back to normal as uh as much normal can get this year, you know, <laughs> as normal as it can get this year. So uh, what's uh, planned uh, uh, for the new season by, uh, by Alcercal Avenue? Because we all missed being in the avenue, walking around the um, streets and just dropping into the galleries, spaces, having coffees and so what's um, what's uh, what's the plan for the new season? Makes me so happy to hear this because um, it, it's this actual it's because it, we didn't know how it will what it will be like to return and we partially reopened in June the moment that you know the government allowed us to uh, to return slowly um, and and so seeing the support from our audiences was what gave us strength to keep going. Um, I, I think collectively. And so one thing that we did, we asked you, our audience actually, um, that is probably logging in here and, uh, and beyond in terms of what would make you feel safe uh, and welcome uh, in order to come back. And so 
a lot of you said actually outdoor programming, public realm being more active is what is what would make everyone to come back. So we actually put together a program uh, throughout our throughout the entire winter season um, where we'll, there will be daily film screenings by Cinema Kiel, uh, our concerts by The Fridge that used to take place more within their space now will also permeate outdoors. So it will be okay. a much more active uh, space uh, anytime when you actually draw by uh, Al Sarkal our yoga and uh, our lifestyle concepts will also uh, become active on weekends outdoors. So that's kind of one of the kind of key prerequisites. But uh, before we um, kind of talk a bit more about fall and winter season, I think we must mention the kind of the marker of when it's opening. So September 19th, this very Saturday, um, we are kicking off our season. We had to think you know, how al Calates would be different this year, like you said, in this kind of new normal environment. And so um, we stretched it from a few hours that used to be a nighttime event into a 12-hour event yeah. uh, where we now have guided tours in both English and Arabic uh, to engage our audiences um, to come and see Mohammed Malehi show uh, a survey of, of his work, um, something that, you know, was in the making for last March. Uh, it's something that we had to move uh, to mm -hmm. September, but I'm very grateful to see it come to life and that we were still able to bring it to our audiences. And uh, it will be available online as much as within the physical realm in concrete, uh, just because we are aware that some members of our society might not still be able to come and engage physically. So yeah. it's really important that we... I was reading this every day on Instagram somewhere that the kind of new hybrid duality is now called yeah. digital. So digital. it's the physical, <laughs> physical and digital, and digital. Uh, connected. And so, of course, yeah. you know, that's our new reality. So our programs, our exhibitions will be available online as much as offline. And, um, and we welcome our communities to come back and engage. I mean... Our galleries have incredible shows, uh, so many solo shows. I mean, from uh, Fat Berkey at Grey Noise to Mohammed Ahmed Ibrahim mm -hmm. at Lori Shabibi, Mohammed Kazam at Gallery Isabel, uh, Abdul Kader Rayas at uh, Leila Heller. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to uh, think who else. Um, so that I don't forget anyone, uh, Siba, all Saba, uh, to Siba at um, um, at One by One Gallery, and um, who else do we have? Um, Hera Buyutaksian at Green Art Gallery as well. So there's some, you know, actually also the Third Line continued their group group show, which they put together in March for their 15th anniversary. So it's a really an institutional exhibition really yeah. worth seeing and engaging with. Signature. Um, we'll have, yeah, absolutely. And we'll have uh, programs that uh, support uh, these exhibitions that are happening throughout. So while September 19th is, is an important day and we kick off our fall season, yeah. um, we're also creating ways to engage our communities throughout um until the you know our show in concrete will be until october 10th uh, so there are many opportunities to come back and return and engage um and then of course on top of that we have new community members that are joining um from various disciplines uh, in the avenue so you'll be witnessing more than 10 new spaces that will open their doors wow. um some of which i cannot announce yet but they're super, super exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think this kind of, um, you know, that's how you keep things fresh and exciting is, is by bringing in um, new, uh, new ideas um, that can kind of flow through al um, and, and I think, um, you know, we are, like I said, putting all safety measures in place um, to make sure that we can um, keep our audiences safe. Uh, within the guidelines that are given uh, right. by the government. Um, but, but I really, you know, I think the moment we reopened, even on a kind of very um, 
on a low scale, let's say in June, I've seen our audience is really hungry for return. I hungry, mean, very hungry. I feel so hungry for arts and for uh, for being, yeah, for for seeing arts, for being in the creative spaces. Like, yeah, that's that's real hunger, you know. <laughs> well, that makes us happy to hear that because. You know, I think um, maybe something that I must mention, and I, I assume many audiences have engaged with it already, where our kind of long form uh, program uh, that <clears throat> was uh, led and put together by uh, Nada Reza, who is leading Altrical Arts Foundation in mm -hmm. our team, um, in ways, how can we respond um, to the current pandemic with by creating a space that asks those urgent questions as to what is this new normal and whether we want to return to this new normal. And so it was um, a series of, of talks and dialogues uh, conceptualized actually by Mary Ellen Carroll titled, How Will We Return? Um, and they're available on Altercal Online where we've engaged multidisciplinary thinkers and uh, academics and, and, and professionals of various um, disciplines, you know, anyone from uh, economy, philosophy, artistic practice, uh, to ask those questions where we can document those accounts and actually then produce um, uh, almost like a, a white paper, a document, something that we can then take and, and, and implement as part of our, our program and our mission going forward, because I think they are, if we learned anything is that responsibility is not arbitrary and there is more to do about, upon our return um, mm -hmm. in, in terms of repairing our relationship with ecology, focusing on, the, on actually economies of repair uh, altogether. And so sustainability is, is at the core of our mission going forward. And this is something that we also want to we focus our energy on a bit more as a community. We feel we could do more, we could be more. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think there are some long-term uh, ways and ideas um, and paradigms that, that we are collectively uh, thinking about and are asking urgent questions about the future. That's absolutely um, <laughs> stunning and inspiring to hear that even despite uh, this uh, uh, slow motion reality, you know, uh, Altercal <laughs> Avenue <laughs> still uh, managed to do so much and uh, uh, created so much, create to, to create so much, to uh, produce, uh, uh, to bring new concepts into the avenue. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm very very excited about the 19th. So I'm definitely will be will be there and. Uh, Whoever, whoever feels safe, yeah, to come and uh, uh, yeah, I'm uh, very much encouraging everyone to uh, to come and join Al Circal Avenue on the opening day on the 19th of uh, September, which is this Saturday. Thank you so much. And we will all be there, and we are looking forward to welcoming all of you. And uh, Vilma, thank you, thank you so much. It was absolute pleasure talking to you we like had 40 minutes conversation already we it have some by. questions <laughs> yeah it flew by it's like already so we have a lot some questions but um great i don't know if we have uh, enough time to answer them okay let me quickly see what's uh, uh what's here <laughs> sorry no the questions are good Lots of waves, lots of. I would love to. Uh, no, someone, someone wants to show their works at El Circal. <laughs> well, uh, do engage with us on social media platforms on elcircal.online. Uh, drop us an email with your ideas, with your portfolio, with your proposal. And this is something I want to really voice not only for artistic community that's listening, but for our audiences in general. I mean, we are always so open to your critique, to your suggestions, um, to how can we do things better and differently. And so, you know, any ideas that you might have, uh, one of the things about Al Circal is that we don't really have the hierarchy or bureaucracy that usually a large institution would have. 
And so we are very responsive uh, that way. So anytime someone messages us or says, hey, this is how a lot of our collaboration is born is actually online through social or just people knocking on our door at four. Um, and, and then you see those projects actually manifest and come to life. I mean, on the, the September 19th, something I forgot to mention, uh, El Cid is gonna do a mural that is inspired from Mohamed Malehi's exhibition of concrete um, at the entrance where he'll be engaging our community as well. So there's just so much um, to look forward to and, and engage with uh, on the day, but also beyond that. Beyond that, yeah. There is a question, still the art uh, has to be sold to give the artist rest. How do you do this? It's such an important question because actually one thing I forgot to mention that this is the best time to um, uh, also begin collecting. Um, I cannot emphasize enough how uh, at, at this particular time, you, could, you can engage because uh, our uh, gallerists and artists are present and they're all willing to give more time than they usually would be able to, to actually help share and educate um, our audiences in, in terms of um, their practice. And, and so I think we all have a role to play. Uh, that's, that's for sure. I think all members of our society uh, have a role to play in helping us support artistic community here. Um, we as El Cercal, I mean, we, uh, we commission and work with so many locally and regionally based practitioners. And we always insist on, uh, on um, artist fee and fee for creative members that we work with. We are uh, very particular about, you know, intellectual property and copyright of ideas because these are the aspects that we really stand for as Los Tercal. I mean, this is, this is what we do. Um, but I couldn't agree more about the support that because we are not in isolation, we are part of the city of Dubai, we are part of the UAE, yeah. we are part of the region. Um, we are building everything collectively, as you said. And I think also it, it, it's worth saying a thank you uh, to our audiences, to our publics for powering through this with us, for supporting online programs that we had, for engaging, for keeping us going, and to our community of patrons and collectors that have returned, that have supported the galleries and, um, and, and our artists by purchasing their work and adding it to their collections, although this time is difficult economically you know, for all of us. Of course. Um, and so I think that's where we really started as El is with a big thank you. And to people like yourself, who is helping us spread the word, even by having my very first uh, Instagram live. And, and so that's really what this is all about. It's this collectivity, uh, yes. this magnetism of people coming together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vilma. It was a pleasure. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, staying together will bring us to the to the better times, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you again. And I'll see you in the avenue very soon, in yeah. person. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, soon, very soon. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, and thanks everyone. everyone who joined. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.